Chapter three, the four dimensions of service management. In this chapter, we're going to discuss in details about four dimensions model. Part of four dimensions, we have organizations and people, informations and technology, partners and suppliers, value streams and processes. And part of this one, we have value streams for service management and processes. And we have some external factors. We're going to discuss in details around that. The four dimensions of service management, main purpose for this one to support a holistic approach to service management. Holistic approach means integrated view. ITL defines four dimensions that collectively are critical to the effective and efficient facilitations of value for customers and other stakeholders in form of product and services. So ITL four dimensions, that's actually defined how all the parts of the organizations, they worked in an integrated way and can create value for customers and stakeholders in form of product and services. So these four dimensions represents perspectives which are relevant to the whole service value system including the entirety of the service value chain and all ITL practices. Now, this is the four dimensions model. So around our products and services, we have these four dimensions. And by having proper utilizations of these four dimensions, we'll be able to create value for our product and services. But these four dimensions model, it can be affected from some other external factors, such as political factors may influence around these four dimensions, economical factors, societal factors, technological factors, legal factors, environmental factors, they can influence this, all these four dimensions model. So first one is organizational organizations and people. The first dimensions of service management is organizations and people. That means we have customers, employees of suppliers, employees of the service provider, or any other stakeholder in the service management relationship. So purpose of this one, it is important to develop the skills and competencies of teams or individual members, management and leadership styles, and communications and collaboration skills. So this dimension focus mostly for the organization's people. So how you know their skill can be improved, how better way collaborations and communications can happen around these um, areas, how management can be organized around that areas. So it provide guidance around that areas. It is important for people to understand the interfaces between their specializations and roles and roles and those of others in the organizations to ensure proper levels of collaborations and coordinations. It's saying that it is very important for the people who work in the company, understand all the interfaces. That means how collaborations can be done, how communications can be done, so what are the different channels you have in the company? So that includes, you know, how many departments you have. So which department is responsible for what task? And interface means how you're going to collaborate with them, whether you're using Microsoft Teams or email systems or any other collaboration tools or, you know, contact with them via phone. So those things is part of this interfaces. Every person in the organization should have a clear understanding of their contribution towards creating value for the organizations and its customers and stakeholders. So when you work for a company, you need to understand what is the value creation process for your company, for your customers, and for your services. Promoting a focus on value creation is an 
effective method of breaking down organizational silos. Maybe in the organizations, you may have many barriers to communicate with one department with another department. Maybe it's very difficult to hold off in a particular department. By understanding you know, all the interfaces and by focusing on value, maybe you'll be able to find out the you know, better channel to communicate with that particular department. So that means you'll be able to overcome many issues if you have you know, proper collaborations and coordination tools, and if you understand the interfaces properly. So organizations and people, they're asking to concentrate around that areas. Now, information and technology, Information and technology applies both to service management and to the services being managed. This dimension includes the information created, managed, and used in the course of service provision and consumption, and the technologies that support and enable that service. The specific information and technologies cover all levels of IT architectures including applications, databases, communication systems, and integrations. So it's this dimension is mostly saying that how all information can be created, managed, and used. What are the IT services we have in this um, company, including application database, communication systems, and their integrations, those things need to understand properly. The use of mobile platforms, cloud solutions, remote collaboration tools, automated testing, and deployment solution has become common practice among service providers. In relation to information component of this dimension, organizations should consider the following questions. What information is managed by the service? What supporting information and knowledge are needed to deliver and manage the services? It's saying that, for example, what's your domain? Which area are you working? If you are working in financial sectors, maybe all of your customers and staffs, they are related with you know, the financial things, and you need to manage the financial you know, information. And how will the information and knowledge assets be protected, managed, archive and dispose of, so you need to understand that areas. Information technology and value to organizations. For many services, information management is the primary means of enabling customer value. So information service, service management means creating value for the customers. For example, an HR service facilitates value creations for its customers by enabling the organizations to access and maintain accurate information about its employees, their employment, and their benefits without exposures of private information to unauthorized parties. So this is the HR service provide, and that's how it create value. It's provide the right information of the right type, and also it's, it doesn't provide the information to any unauthorized parties. So it's create value. And then network management service. This one facilitates value creations for its users by maintaining and providing accurate information about an organization's active network connections and utilizations, allowing it to adjust its network bandwidth capacity. The proper network management service, you can monitor the service, how your service is performing, you know, what is the utilization is happening, any service access is required, you can manage with that as well. So information is generally the key output of the majority of the IT service, which are consumed by the business outcomes. Technology for use in the organizations. When considering a technology for use organizations may consider these questions. So that means when you're adopting any new technology, for example, you want to purchase something 
uh, in your co um, company or for your customers. You are going to purchase some new systems or you're going to offer new system to your customers. That time, we need to think these stuffs. Is the technology compatible with the current architectures of the organizations and its customers? Do the different technology products used by the organizations and its stakeholders work together? Does this technology raise any regulatory or other compliance issues? Does this technology align with the strategy of the service provider or its service consumers? Does the organizations have the right skills across its staff and uh, suppliers to support and maintain the technology? Does this technology have sufficient automations capabilities? Does this technology introduce new risk or constraints to the organizations? For example, locking it into a specific vendors, right? These are the questions we need to consider when you adapting any new technology. So this is the third sections, which is partners and suppliers. The purpose of the partners and suppliers dimension encompasses and organizations relationships with other organizations that are involved in the design, development, deployment, delivery, support and or continual improvement or services. It also incorporates contracts and other agreements between the organizations and its partners or suppliers. Right, every company, we have partners and suppliers. So how to manage and maintain a relationship with those suppliers and part, uh, partners? So these dimensions will provide us some guidance around that. So relationships between organizations may involve various levels of integrations and formality. So this range from formal contacts with clear separations of responsibilities to flexible partnerships where parties share common goals and risk and collaborate to achieve desired outcomes. So these are the different kind of relationships we may have with our partners and suppliers. Let's have a look in details these relationships between organizations. Form of cooperations, let's say we have good supply. Good supply output will be goods supplied, responsibility for the outcome, suppliers, sorry, output, suppliers, and responsibility for the achievement of outcome is customer because customer who define the requirements and they'll be responsible for outcomes. So this kind of scenario, the level of formality will be formal supply contract and invoices. An example, procurement of computers and phones. Let's say your company purchase, you know, computers, phones, laptop and tablet from you know, another vendors. So you'll have a formal agreement with that. Now service delivery. Output will be service delivered. Responsibility for the outputs provider. So service provider will provide these services and outcome customer will be responsible for outcome. Formal agreements and flexible cases. So in this scenario, you may have, you know, service level agreement with your customers. Let's say you're providing some services to them. They are consuming the services from you. For example, cloud computing, infrastructures of our platform as a service. Now service partnerships, value co-created. When you have a partnership, so value creations happen in both sides. So shared between provider and customer, shared between provider and customer. So output, 
So response, both provider and customer, they're responsible. Outcomes, both provider and consumer, customer, they're responsible. And level of formality, shared goals, generic agreements, flexible case-based arrangements, examples, employee onboarding, shared between HR, facilities, and IT. So in this sites, both parties, they have the interest. So that's how service partnerships, this kind of cooperations happened. So partners and suppliers, mostly they're talking about um, these relationship types. Now, another things we have under these partners and suppliers, factors that may influence an organization's strategy when using suppliers in grid. It's saying that when you choose any suppliers, we choose that suppliers based on many different factors. Maybe you have a strategic focus, corporate culture, resource scarcity, cost concern, subject matter expertise, external constraints, demand patterns. Based on these factors, we actually choose the suppliers. So strategic focus means some organizations may prefer to focus on their core competency and to outsource non-core supporting functions to third parties. Others may prefer to stay as self-sufficient as possible retaining full control over all important functions. So that means sometimes it's a strategy. Many company, they actually outsource, may, they may um, outsource their you know, level one help desk support to managed service provider or other companies. Maybe this is their, you know, one of the, uh, one of the goal or maybe they maintain you know, level two, level three, or core components they manage by your, themselves, but you know, level one task, they outsource to different company. So that could be one of the focus from company when they choose you know, third party suppliers. Or maybe corporate cultures. This is some organizations have a historical preference for uh, one approach over another. So long-standing cultural bias is difficult to change without compelling reasons. Corporate culture means maybe when you purchase any goods and services, you always purchase from that particular community, particular group. So that may be the company's culture. So this is another um, you know, strategy company may have. Resource is scarcity. Based on this one, company can choose a particular suppliers. If a required resource or skill set is in short supply, it may be difficult for the service provider to acquire what is needed without engaging a suppliers. So based on these factors, maybe company choose a particular supplier who can provide the services you know, on time and when required. Cost concerns. The decisions may be influenced by whether the service provider believes that it is more economical to source a particular requirement from a supplier. So that's related with cost. Subject matter expertise. So this service provider, the service provider may believe that it is less risky to use a supplier that already has expertise in a required area, rather than trying to develop and maintain the subject matter expertise in-house. Subject matter expertise, this is me. Maybe you, your company choose a particular you know, suppliers because they have expert people. So if you fix something and during that time, if you need help from your you know, suppliers, maybe they have some expert people who can help you. So based on that factors, maybe you choose a particular suppliers. External constraints, government, 
regulations. Maybe you know government has some rules and regulations that you need to purchase the service only from those company who store their data and services in here, locally in Australia, like that. So maybe government has some regulations based on that, you choose a particular suppliers. Demand patterns. Customer activity or demand for services may be seasonal or demonstrate high degrees of variability. So these patterns may impact the extent to which organizations use external service providers to cope with variable demand. So maybe demand factors in a particular time, particular you know, time in a year, you need a particular supplies. And based on this you know, demand patterns, you may choose some particular suppliers who can provide you goods and services on the time. So all these factors, organizations will consider, or this is part of their strategy, and that's how they select suppliers. Okay. Right, so based on these factors, it does not like company may use a particular supplier and behind that, all this reason actually works. Now value stream and process, this is another dimensions we have. This dimension is concerned with how the various parts of the organizations work in an integrated and coordinated way to enable value creations through product and services. So this dimension focuses on what activities the organizations undertakes and how they organized, as well as how the organizations ensures that it is enabling value creating for all stakeholders efficiently and effectively. So what are the you know, tasks um, you do and how, what are the system you use, what are the tools you use and how actually you create value. So value teams is talking about that. So at first let's have a look, what is a value stream? So value streams is a series of steps that an organization uses to create and deliver products and services to service consumer. A value stream is a combination of the organization's value chain activities. So value stream means is basically one, uh, a series of steps a company is taking in order to create value. So value stream of optimizations may include process automations or adoptions of emerging technologies and ways of working to gain efficiencies or enhance user experience. So value stream optimizations means process automations. For example, customer want to order something, they may contact with you. And then after that, you prepare the you know, water for the customers and then you deliver it. So all this process, it can be happen in automated way as well. So every time you do some task, customer will get update about that information. So that kind of like process automations. So you make some changes, so customer will get update. So customer don't need to contact with you. So that's one of the way customer you know, get informed automatically. And that's how we can create value for them as well. So value stream should be defined by organizations for each of their product and services. That means let's say you provide a defense services. For defense services, the value creation process will be different. Let's say you provide application services and your application service may have you know, different plans or different products. Same application services, but many, many, many different way you present this application services to your customers. So how each of the way, um, each of the presentations, how you can create value, you should have a proper documentations about that. So that means um, for each services, you should have a separate value creation process. 
addition to your application services, maybe you provide, you know, um, IPTV services, or you maybe provide, you know, internet connections. So for each of the services, we should have a separate value creation process. Now value streams can be redefined to react to changing demand and other circumstances or remain stable for a significant amount of time. In any case, they should be continually improved to ensure that the organization achieves its objectives in an optimal way. And value, value stream is not like, you know, fixed. It can change after two months. It can change after three months based on the changes because these days everything is, you know, changing. So customer demand may get changed. Customer, uh, you know, outcome may get changed as well. So value creation process also may change. So that's why your value streams can be redefined based on the changes or demand pattern. So what is processes? Process is a set of activities that transform inputs to outputs. Processes describe what is done to accomplish an objective and well-defined processes can improve productivity within and across organizations. There are usually details in procedures which outline who is involved in the process and work instructions, which explains how they are carried out. Process means a work instructions. For example, a new customers, you know, want to get your services. So what is the process to adopt the services or get the services? What are the steps need to be taken? Or maybe any existing customers, they have some, you know, issues uh, with their applications. Maybe they can't log into that applications. So how to resolve that issues? There should be a pro proper work instructions or process for that. So when applied to product and services, this dimension helps to answer the following questions. What is the generic delivery model for the service? And how does the service works? Right? Part of this process should have you know, these informations. What are the value streams involved in delivering the agreed outputs to the service? And who or what performs the required service actions? What is the role? Who is going to fix any particular things? All these things will be included in these dimensions. So in this way, when you prepare any services, and if you deliver that services to your customers, definitely you'll be able to create value. Yep. But around that areas, this is the formal process, four dimensions model uh, we have looked at, uh, but some external factors that can cause some problem around that as well. Service providers affected by many external factors. To analyze these external factors, frameworks such as the PESTEL model are used. PESTEL is an acronym, um, acronym for the political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental factors that constraints or influence how a service provider operates. Right, so PESTEL stands for political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. So these factors influence how organizations configure their resources and address the four dimensions of service management. Even when you think about that value creation process before you deliver your service to your customers, you can think all the systems. Because political factors that may have influence, economical, that means buying power, you know, what kind of community they are purchasing your services, what are the, uh, how um, they are looking at the technologies, what kind of technology they are looking for, right? 
any legal issues related with your service delivery or not, or how the environmental factors, how the environment, um, you know, influence over there. So once you know these steps, then it will help you to create value for your customers. So government and societal attitudes towards environmentally friendly products and services may result in the organizations investing more in tools and technologies that meet external expectations. Economic and societal factors may influence organizations to create several versions of the same product to address various consumer groups that show different buying patterns, right? Data protection laws or regulations have changed low com um, how companies must collect, process, access, and store customer data, as well as how they work with external partners and suppliers. So all these things, they have influence in our four dimensions model. So these factors we need to consider when we try to create values around our product and services. 